How's life after losing your mom or dad? Today, we're not gonna lie. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of NGL People where we talk about things in life that matter. I'm Zeleni. And I'm Nata. And today we're going to talk about the topic of losing our parents to death at a young age. Uh, and for some of us here, we might be in a space where we are going through this and uh, we may not be in the right mm-hmm. space of mind to listen to content about grief, about losing our parents. So we encourage you to click away from this episode and you're free to watch our other episodes about other topics as well. But for those of you who decide to stay, uh, we hope that this episode will bring some comfort to you or even some uh, helpful advice also uh, on how you can support your friends or loved ones who might be going through this as well. Yeah, and so for today's episode, we've got two friends who have very courageously said yes to coming on to sharing their stories with us and we are very, very thankful that we get to hear your stories today. Mm. So why don't you introduce yourself by telling us your name? Maybe you can also let us know how old you were when it happened. Uh, Hello, my name is Miriam and um, I was 10 when I lost my mom, and I was about 19, 20 when I lost my dad. So yeah, I was like really, really young. Mm. Yeah, about 10 years apart. Yeah, and you lost both of them to an illness. Yeah, so um, I lost my mom to breast cancer. Yeah, I think she like she had it for for a few years, okay. and then I lost my dad to stomach cancer. His battle was like what nine months only. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty short. Yeah. Okay. Hello, I'm Wei Jian, and I lost my dad uh, when I was thirteen uh, to lung cancer. We realized that actually both Miriam and Wei Jian, right are very mm. good friends, right? But y'all didn't really talk about it yeah, like yeah. in depth before. Never had a chance to. And I, th- I think we didn't dare to bring that topic across yeah, also. Yeah. Like. I feel sometimes that that's the thing when we have friends who go through mm. some form of grief, right? You're not really sure how much oh. you can ask, when mm. is a good time to ask. After it happens, then you feel like so much time has passed, maybe I shouldn't bring up yeah. the topic again. And if we think like that, then actually we could possibly go by a long time without even asking our friends really yeah. mm. what happened. La. So coming back to the idea of NGL, we always want to create a safe space for conversation to feature stories that maybe sometimes go unheard. Yeah. And hopefully, mm. if you are currently going through something like that, as you hear their story, may you also find some comfort and resonance knowing that you're not the only mm. one navigating some of the feelings that mm. you're going through right now as well. Yeah. 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 So, let's get into it. There will be lots of tears today. Uh, we are prepared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we say yes. that Zell's going to cry first. Yeah, no, yeah, the tissue is like right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Easy access. So, do y'all remember how y'all felt back then when it first happened? I think probably regretful first. I think because I, I was just a terrible kid when I was growing up. La. Like, uh, my last interaction with him was just me, uh, like, a bit like looking down on him. So then after that, he left for a Malaysia trip uh, for a wedding and all that. And I think on the first day there, um, we received a call that like, uh, he's being sent to like A&E in Singapore. Like, uh, he was coughing up blood and all that. And then I think when we reached the A&E, like, uh, everything's in a mess. Everyone was crying. And I was like, mm. I was a 13 year old kid. And I was like, oh, what's going on? You know, like, but I was in shock. So I, mm. I haven't fully processed it yet. So everyone was bawling their eyes out. But I'm just like, oh, what, what just happened? Mm. Then I only remember the, the news was that uh, my dad will either be a vegetable for life or like he'll pass away. So like, it's both outcomes suck. La. Like, oh. so that was the first instance when as a 13 year old kid, I was in shock and I couldn't believe then I probably may not be able to see my dad ever again. Then mm-hmm. I think that, then fast forward everything, it was at his deathbed already. La. Then I think that, mm-hmm. at that point, I still haven't cried. I, I just stood and stared. La. Like as a 13 year old kid, it was really very difficult to to comprehend what a loss it was. La. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think when I first saw my mom, like she didn't just cry, she bawled her eye yeah. out. She oh. will, right? So like, I think that was a, a very big shock. And like as a thirteen year old kid, you expected like your your parents to journey with you at yeah. least like for a longer period of time. I I was mm. in denial like, in a sense. So like mm. I remember I made up some like lousy excuse. Like I, I told my mom like oh, I got this DNT project that I need to finish. I, I really forced myself to go back to school. So the first day was at the like we were preparing the week all that. Then day two yeah. I told my mom like oh I want to go to school because like I got some project. So, okay. Just wanted to get away from the Correct. present situation. Right? Correct. Because everyone is at my house, like like the funeral oh, arrangements, yeah. all that. So like seeing everyone in my apartment is like, it's a reminder oh, that yeah. I lost my dad. Yeah. So it's like, if I go back to school, it's like the, 
yeah, everything is normal. Like, like I am normal. Nothing is nothing is wrong. But yeah. I remember at morning assembly, right? Like because I wasn't there for the first day. Yeah. So my friend asked me like, oh, hey, actually, why are you still near? Come, come. Then I just like. Oh, uh, my, my dad had cancer. Then he was like, ah, just cancel only. Wa. Then I said, I, I bought. I, I went to the toilet, I cried. And I know that like, like oh, it's, life will never be the same again. Mm. And I think that it, the, the truth and the reality really sink in when, when I saw the, the coffin go, go in the, mm. the, the, the fire the, the, for the very last time. And then the coffin drop. I don't know why there's a dramatic drop to the, to the coffin. I, I, but once I saw mm. the coffin drop, right, I, I, I really cried like, 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 like mad. Because... That was the last time when I know that like I will, I will never see my dad ever again la. So mm. yeah, I think when uh, I think that was the point of me um, finally realizing that mm. I will never see my dad physically ever again. Yeah. Okay, it has begun. <laughs> it has begun. Miriam, it has what begun. about you? Um, yeah, I think like when my when my mom passed, cause I was ten, so I was really really young, so. I don't remember how I really felt, but okay. for sure, like, sadness was one thing. But um, a recent conversation I had with my brother, he told me that, like, I asked him whether my mom was coming back. I think that's wild. Yeah, at 10 years old, like, I think I just couldn't grapple with, like, what mm. death was. Like, mm. I think I had yet to understand it. And um, I think the whole idea of, like, permanent absence, now, we, now I understand. But I think at 10 years old, like, yeah, no one... Do you remember how yeah. it was told to you? Um, I think I was in the hospital with my helper. Oh, okay. Yeah, my helper was like holding me super tight. Mm. But honestly, like I can't remember a lot of things. Yeah, because yeah, like yeah. at ten, you're primary four. 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 Mm. Yeah, pea brain. So I think <laughs> I think pea brain cannot understand a lot of things, and mm. that was one of them. Yeah, I think like okay. death was something that, you know, like it's as if like oh. I think my dad probably just said like she's sleeping or something. I have no mm. idea. Yeah, but it sounds it's 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 his character to say this kind of stuff. And then, like, my helper was just, like, holding me. And then, yeah, I think, like, probably just felt, like, lost. Yeah, like, how come the house, like, sh- it's emptier? And then, uh, given that my mom passed away a week before my brother's A-levels. And then he had to enlist a month oh after gosh. that. Yeah, I knew for my dad, um, I remember feeling, um, like, in disbelief. I was in disbelief and shock because um, what, was, what started as an ordinary health checkup, f- from there it came to, like, stomach cancer. And then oh. I was like, what? Yeah, so actually I got a call from my brother and um, I was an intern. I was working at Science Park and then he told me to go all the way to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, like just like leave your work, apply leave and whatever. And then like, I remember like thinking to myself like, st- like he got stomach cancer. I don't even know what stage at that time on the mm. call. Yeah, and then I was just like in shock and disbelief. I like mm. couldn't like, I cannot be like nine years later again. Like one more time. So on the way from Science Park to the hospital, I was asking God, like, is this a fever dream? Like, is this happening again? Like, this can't be real. Once I met my family at the hospital, yeah, and then I saw the gaze in my dad's eyes. I was like, okay, I've never seen this guy lost. Mm. And like, it's my first time seeing his face, like, mm. yeah, like he had no plans. And I think like my brother really like took the fault. Like, my brother led, led the conversations and I think like, I needed him to do it also. So okay. from point of diagnosis to passing was nine months. The day of his passing, he passed in the wee hours of the morning, like six-ish. And at that time, um, my brother and I were home. By the time we got to the hospital, he has already passed. La. I remember sitting on the hospital floor after he passed away. I was like, wow, like this, like it's today. Like of all this, it's today. And then like, mm. yeah, my brother and I were so tired. And then like we had to call out the undertaker. We had to go to the police station. We had to do this, 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 all this because we were by ourselves. Yeah. You didn't have relatives in... Yeah, we didn't have relatives here. So, like, it was just my brother oh. and I. So, yeah, I think, like, it's crazy, you know, how, like, you have to punch the IC or the passport. Like, whole punch. Oh, yeah. I didn't know Don't that. know. Yeah, so it's it's a, it's a whole thing. Mm. Yeah, and, and and I think, like, at 19, 20, like, I was like, okay, it's a bit strange to do this. Mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think I, I felt strange. Like... I out of body. Yeah, very, very out of body. Fever yeah. dream. Yeah, the fever it's dream like continued for nine months. I feel, oh. yeah, I think like that was how I felt. I guess for the two of you, given that it happened pretty early, mm. I mean, um, P4 for you and then SEC1 for you, Weijian, right? What were some of the impact yeah. that it had on you la, growing mm. up? Oh. Um, I think, wow, it's a lot. Eh. I think that, firstly, I think I felt very inferior compared to my classmates. And I think I, I grew up with, with that. La. I think time in secondary school, you like to compare like, oh, where you go for holidays? Then like, they'll show like, like family photos. But I know in reality that, oh, oh there's only me, my mom and my sis left. Then I'll be like, oh, I don't have a complete family. There's a feeling of like, a, I'm a bit incomplete. 
So I think that that is a bit ingrained in me uh, growing up. And I think uh, that shaped me into the kind of person that, that I feel a bit more insecure uh, naturally growing up as well. Uh. At such a young, young age, I feel a, a deep sense of loss, right? I think that um, I, I don't want to lose people again. Uh. It's the whole idea of um, I, I don't have to feel the sense of loss if I don't have anyone to lose. Yeah, mm. and I think that, that, and that's why I think growing up, I became a, a bit more guarded towards uh, people. Uh, mm. I mean, all in all aspects, la, like in, in, even in friends, I, I became really very guarded. I, I'm very careful on on who I let into my life. What about not having uh, like a dad made you feel like what you mentioned mm. just now, incomplete? Mm. I think it's the whole feeling of needing a leader in life. Yeah, I think mm. that like, even though like in Asian context, we don't really talk to our dad sometimes. Like sometimes just over the dinner table, just uh, mm, like, like mm, ah, all that kind, right? But it's like uh, having a dad gives you security. You know that when you go through like down moments, you know that like there's a dad for you. Lah. And I think that uh, when I lost my dad at, at such an age, right? That I felt like my, my sense of security, like eh, like if I was ever in trouble, like like if I ever get bullied in school. Who to turn to? Yeah, I, I don't really have anyone to turn to. Like I, I don't think I would go to my mom that like, kind. So like well, it's the whole sense Is of, it like you don't want her to worry or Yeah. So I be, mm. I, I think I was also forced to grow up a bit more independently. Yeah. Like so that I don't worry her. She can she can go and earn money mm. that kind. But right. oh, but I just feel I just felt like there was a sense of like a like I was a lone ranger, mm. so I, I felt like I had to fight my battles on my own, and I mm. felt like, yeah, you know, every everything that come my way, um, I had to take it up by myself, lor. Like we all knew that we we lost someone, like me, my mom, and my sis, right? Like myself, I felt like, um, I, I didn't want to talk about it. It's like the you didn't want to open up. Yeah, it's like a it's like a I I saw you wail and cry at the at the funeral, and I I I don't want to open that up again. During the funeral, that time I I slept with her. Cause like we were mm. all sharing rooms, like at my house was just crowded, la. And yeah. like I was turning outside, I could I could hear her like <laughs> that kind, like yeah. I could hear her sniffing, right? And and it was non-stop that kind. And I know that she still feels it, um, like from then from time to time. Like I I I do find her in her room sometimes, like sometimes cry, crying a little. Right. Yeah. So I felt like as a form of protection for myself and for her, right, I I I don't open that box, though. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like it's like a we all know, but we don't talk about it. Yeah. That kind. How about the part about feeling like less of a person? Mm -hmm. Like, was there something that you could make sense of as you grew mm -hmm. up now in your 20s? Uh, when when a dead figure is no longer present in your life, I think that that really took a hit on my own identity. But thank God, I, I think that like my sister invited me to church um, uh, in that same year that my, my, my dad uh, passed away. Uh, as I attended church, um, like mentors were appointed over me, that kind of thing. They, they took over the role, like unconsciously, they didn't even know, right? But I think they unconsciously took over the role of, mm -hmm. of being like a leader, like a like an older brother to me in my life that mm -hmm. I, I, I needed at that point of time. La. So I, I yeah. felt like uh, at this point now, uh, in, my, in, my, in my 20s, I, I, I feel, um, I think without the church, right, I wouldn't be where I am today. I think that it really helped me and, and God himself, I think really helped me to to shape me to to where I am in my 20s. La. If not, I think that my trajectory is not like this uh, without the church. La. Yeah. Mm. Actually, what was the growing up with your dad like after your mom passed? Yeah, yeah I uh, I think that was the hardest. Yeah, actually my whole life up to now, like, I think that was the hardest part. Like the the nine years gap, right? Yeah, I think mm. like my, my dad... um. He like he kind of like superimposed uh, an expectation on my brother and I to do well, to be well, you know, to to be of a certain kind of a person. Mm. And like if we don't achieve it, he's not shy to say that like you're a disappointment. Yeah, is it specifically academic. Success? Yeah, ac academic ac academic is one aspect. I think like as a person also like the character, like wow, the, okay. the 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 way we are. He really like was not shy to say that like oh, later I suck by. The kind of thing like you're really a failure, yeah, in Cantonese. So, I think um mm. that at that time the biggest memory that I have is like when I like primary five or six, like I I didn't do well on a math test, I probably failed. And then like he made me kneel in front of like my mom's picture, like where the urn used to be, like at that point. And then like he slapped me, yeah. And I think like that was the only oh. time he was physical, like one and only time, yeah. And and but it's enough lah to hit mm. like you hit an 11, 12 year old, like it's gonna be in her memory forever. Mm. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. And I think like. 
my helper was stunned. My brother was in camp. She cannot oh. call him or so. And I yeah. think like that was like, I don't remember how I was feeling. I just remember crying like, like crazy. La. But yeah, from I think like- shock? From, from pain, shock? Or? Yeah, from shock. I think Everything. like the pain, yeah. The pain was like probably the least <laughs> of yeah. my problems. Yeah. yeah. It was like, I was scared of him. Like yeah. I suddenly am scared. So yeah. so since that uh, point yeah. to when he passed, yeah. you, you were just like, a bit wary of him. It's wary, like yeah. I feel like, already. yeah, I feel like the, I was walking on eggshells. I also want to please him at the same time. You see, like, it's it's mm. it's wild because, like, I want to do well in school. I don't want to, like, get on your, like, naughty list kind of stuff. Like, I don't want to be bad, la, but mm. I know he means well. I know he just wants me to do well in school. Like, I get it. Like, and I'm going to try my best, but I think that, that fear drove me uh, quite, wow. quite, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah mm. it, was, it, was a big, it was a big thing to deal with la, at that time. Mm. What was it like to, I mean for both of you, la, given that you could see some form of an impact that it made in your life, right? Mm, what was it like working through that? Whether it involves, I don't know whether you would consider that healing, right. but what was that process like? La? Looking back, um, yeah, my dad had a lot of expectations on us because like, I think he wanted to be, he, uh, he wasn't equipped la, to be a single dad. No one would be, right? No one, none of us would be equipped to, to lose a parent like yeah. in the split second. And, like, yeah. None of us are equipped to deal with loss that is s- to somebody that's so close and so fast. Yeah, and I think like to my dad, like I acknowledge that he struggled being a single dad. Mm. Yeah, Ooh, now it's starting. Yeah. But I think like, um, I think the, the difficulty that he had, I could not understand at that point. Mm. Yeah, I mean like at 10 years old, I also was not equipped to process it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like looking outwards to my dad, like how would he feel? All these things. Yeah, because stuff, you like, were quite scared of him. Yeah, yeah. So I think like naturally at that point and now it's very different. But yeah. um, acknowledging that he was trying his best, but just couldn't. He just, like, he just couldn't be that kind of dad that he wanted to be la. And I, I don't for him actually. Now I don't for him. But I think like, last mm. time like, whoa, like you are too strict. Sometimes mm. I, I I feel like that that barrier, um, affected the way we were we were relating with each other so. Yeah, mm. so thankfully my brother intervened like, a few times to just like mm. keep us like in check. But oh. I think like the the healing came from knowing that he didn't have a good he didn't his parents also didn't really like do a good job with him because they were all like struggling in that in growing up in Hong Kong. Yeah, and I think like acknowledging that and acknowledging that he was not equipped to be a single dad with two young kids. La. Yeah, I think like that helped me realize that I cannot fault him fully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he didn't have anybody to be with also because he is an immigrant after all. It's not like he mm-hmm. had family here. When he was sick, that point, um, in year th- when I was probably year three, I think like, like God gave me this clarity la, that like, you know what, you cannot hold on to this hurt because like, I don't want you to regret la, like when he passes on. So I think like that journey of healing mm-hmm. was, was long. Yeah. yeah, but it was years in the making, in fact. But yeah. I think like it was, ne- it was needed. And I th- I'm, I'm glad la, that I can say that that we, I moved past that already. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel wow. like because of the expiry date, uh, like it, it hastened things that you, you need to have a clearance with? Like, That's such a good question. Yeah, I think it hastened it. I think like knowing my character, I would have procrastinated this whole process. You wouldn't want to think about it. Yeah, right? I wouldn't mm. want to think about it. Actually, then all my fears would have played longer. Mm. I wouldn't be married now. Confirm. Yeah, because yeah, like, okay, okay. What, what's the story there? Getting married? Yeah, like... Yeah, I, <laughs> ooh, whoa. <laughs> I think like the naturally like it was it was hard to to want to get married because or like even get attached like in fact I think like mm. just the whole pro- the whole concept of like being together with somebody yeah, yeah like properly being together with somebody I think like that that was a a a big hurdle to mm. to like climb over then let alone like having kids like, but let's rewind <laughs> but I think like I think um losing parents before your twenty is hard. Then you imagine like, I think as a, as, as, at that time, like, I was thinking like, I can't imagine like losing a spouse. Like. He was oh. in a super tough spot in your 40s to lose your wife. It's nuts, yeah. And then like, mm. you leave a 10-year-old behind. Yeah, mm. yeah. so I think that, that fear helped me understand my dad. Oh. Yeah, actually. Mm. Wow. Yeah, what, what was the fear actually? like? The fear of losing your partner. Like. I think like that was like, that was like another pain that I don't want to mm. go through. Like. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I even losing so, my brother also. Yeah, I was gonna ask that. Yeah, yeah sorry, not that I want, not that I want to lose him, but I think like, I think like naturally anybody like what, be like what like he's losing said. someone in general. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, close yeah. To you. So it's the same as him. I think we both like really resonate with that. Yeah. The 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 idea to hold on to people tightly and then like, 
Yeah. You want to hold on already, you don't want to let go, or rather you're scared to let go. Yeah, like once you're in my life, you are in my life. Like, yeah. like yeah. I, I don't want to let you go. Yeah. Like this is this applies to all areas, like friends, areas, yeah. family. So like, it's like the the way of self protection to not feel that kind of loss yeah. ever again. Uh. Yeah. yeah. In some sense, it's it's also not that you. It's not about letting go, but that person is being taken. taken yeah, actually, you. while yeah. he was talking, a picture of like yeah. a grape getting plucked out. That was yeah. my oh, mm. that. Yeah, mm. so it's it's like, yeah, you, I don't want anybody to be pinched out from mm. my life. So did you also distance yourself? Uh, like, I, yeah. Like what we see and shit? I distanced myself from any thought of like commitment. Being wow. to mm. yeah, So I mean, you like, can have crushes. But yeah, yeah. You totally like, okay, right? I then think, once I you have, like, you distance. Uh? Yeah. I pull, I pull back. I like, mm. whew, okay. I, I fancy this person. Okay, like, let's not. Wow. Yeah. Let's not. I mean like, can entertain, but like at some point, right? I know that there's this line that I cannot cross. Mm. You don't want to lose them, or like or you don't want them to get experience. too close in fear of losing this one. Then how do you end up married? How do I get married? Right? <laughs> yeah, how I married a great guy, right? Uh, I think, I think like it's really a, a lot of work, a lot of like like work. Um, so I think like the aspect of doing life with people, particularly with a partner, so I think that's something that that my friend like helped me realize that like, it's a joy to have. Despite the fear. Despite the fear, yeah. And and I mean the fear obviously will still exist. Ma. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It exists for all of us, right? I yeah. think all of us are scared to lose our friends, our for husbands, sure. our mm. uh, everybody, even our pets also. We also scared to lose our pets, ma. Yeah. It's the same thing. So I think like in in fear, in acknowledging these fears, but how can you truly live a life joyful and with purpose? Like, I think that aspect was like like thought to be over time. Yeah. Mm. Over time. Yeah. And I think that will help with the with the healing process also. Yeah. Acknowledging that like this is part of life. Like you know that um you know that death will always be part of us. That we will eventually have to say uh bye goodbye to to like your family members, mm-hmm. your 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 pets, your your friends. Uh, I, what helped me in the in the in the healing process to track back, right? Actually, yeah. is is the accepting, is the acknowledging that that uh, death is inevitable, mm. and so like you treasure each and every um, living moment with with mm. the people around you, and, and I think that really helped in my in my growing process, lah. I think because even initially, right, mm. I, I suppressed a lot. Like mm. I, I thought that okay, uh, within like a few months, I must I must start functioning normal again. So I I, yeah, I you gave wanted my... to go back to school on day two. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So like I, I felt like I I put an expir- uh, expiry date on my own grief. Like I didn't yeah, I didn't yeah. I didn't manage my own grief very well. So I I found myself going back to to the same sadness. Uh, as I grew up, like even mm. in when I go NS, that kind, it pop up here and there. Yeah, then until mm. until in my twenties, then I realized that like actually you can't put a, a expiry date on your grief. Like you have to let grief um, go through its process, and you have to uh, f- you have to accept that that death will always be a part of us. Mm. And yeah. and I think that that really helped me in in acknowledging that okay, my my dad is really uh not here with me. And just now I was talking to a friend, right? And and she was asking me, hey, how am I feeling for this shoot? I told her it's kind of like bittersweet in the sense that like, I, I'm sad that um, my dad is gone. Um, but at the same time, uh, it also helped me to relieve some good memories I have with him. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, I start to think back of the, of the times where like, like Sunday morning, he'll wake me up like 8 a.m. I'm like, why are you waking me up at 8 a.m.? <laughs> but he'll bring me down, go and play badminton, play basketball, go and walk in the park. But as I as I as I plan for this shoot, as I as I think about this shoot, right, like it brought happy memories with him also. Wow. So I felt like that was part of the the healing process also. Mm. Okay, so speaking of memories, right? Um I have a question. Um I follow some people on social media who have lost their parents la. So mm. these people are like kinda like in their twenties, some are like in their thirties already. Um so one of the things I remember that I I see across all of these different people's um memories and recounting of their parents. They all mention this one thing, which is that um they were always afraid to come to a point where they feel like they cannot really remember um how their parent sounds mm. like. Mm. Um I think look like you can see pictures. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to the auditory memory, yeah. like it just lives in your head, right? Yeah. Unless you have videos. Um, I'm wondering whether for you guys, like, if you've come to that point already, mm. um, and if not, then is that also a fear la, that mm. you have? Yeah. This is a tear-inducing question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. 
Um, I think like for me like my mom's one like f- gone lah. I think like I don't remember mm. how she sounds like. Actually, I like, even looks also. Mm. Like mm. pictures yeah. are older now. Yeah, and I think like yeah, auditory aspect like for sure gone lah. Although I know she can sing, but oh. my brother and I can't sing, so that yeah. That, I guess you got it from your dad. Yeah, I got it from my dad. <laughs> 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 but I think like yeah, my mom can sing. Apparently yeah, she was in choir all this kind of stuff. But like not. I have no memory of all these things. Mm. Yeah, no memory oh. of how she sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, Did I you have videos to look back on? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it's not like those like, is it called VHS? Like those American yeah, style. Oh, yeah, I don't have. I don't have. But Cam I think Corder. like, Cam Corder is just the word. Yeah, I don't have. But um, I think according to the photos, like, she's quite a lively, like quite like a, like a jovial person. Mm. Yeah, from, from the pictures that I have of her. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think for my dad, I think there are some moments where I can like still like kind of hear, like recognize his voice if I were to like suddenly dream of it, for example. Uh-huh. But I think like overall, won't, not much lah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Which I think is a good thing because like, if not like, I'm fearful, right? I'm actually fearful but if I only remember him shouting at me also. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, but I think like his normal conversational voice so I don't remember lah. Yeah. Do you remember the first moment you couldn't remember? I think no eh. I think it was just gradual. But I think yeah. my mum's one probably hit more. I was like, hey, how come I suddenly like, don't know how she sounds like? When was that? That was wild. I think like it was when I vis- was visiting my mom's sister, my aunt. Mm. Yeah, and then like, actually my uncle, my mom's brother looks like him. Like he just looks like the male version of my mom. Mm. But all, of, all three of them don't sound the same. Mm. But when I was talking to her, I was like, hey, like hey, how come? Like she sounds different. But I think like, yeah, I think like it was, uh, I was probably younger at the time. Mm. Yeah, visiting her and her family and then like, realizing like, hey, like this is, it's not normal la, to not remember these things. Yeah. It did occur to me that um, I, I am losing memory of my dad. Um, it, it hit me, I can't remember exactly when, but I remember mm. that um, when I look at the photo, right, it slowly became an unfamiliar face. And mm. I think that was the point where it was, um, it's like, we all are familiar with our parents. But if it reached, it, for me, when it reached the point where I, when I stare at the portrait, right, and I like, mm. I, I don't know who that man is. Uh, he has a workroom and we, we didn't really touch it. I like, think that we just cleared everything. Now it's an empty room, right? But we left some of his photos there. So I found myself uh, sometimes going into his room and, and just uh, looking at the photos and mm. it really, I don't know, when I see his face, it's like, the, eh, I, I don't remember this man anymore. And I think that was really very scary. Yeah. And that was so scary because like, this is my dad, eh? like I, I don't remember. So I think when I when I started to realize that like I don't have memories of him, right? Um, a little panicky, but then I started to find myself um, going to places where he used to bring me when mm. I was a kid. Like there was a park nearby. Um, like then when I walk when I walk uh, at a at an area where he always bring me, then I'll just stare at it and I'll just I don't have a like video memory, but. It's just uh, like a, hey, I've been here with my dad, that kind of feeling, but I don't remember the, any any form of memory anymore. Mm-hmm. So like, I am really very fearful that as I grow older, right, like, the, I, I have no I have no story to tell to my to my children next time. Like, hey, this mm-hmm. is how your grandpa was like. Yeah. This is how he he raised me, that kind. Yeah, I don't remember, remember how his voice sounds like also. Yeah, I think it was really very scary. Um, even to this point, uh, like, now that I now it has been like uh like ten plus years, right? Yeah. Um, I think it, it is something that gets even scarier actually. Like like um that I don't remember how he's like I only remember that he's short la. But <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but other than that, I really wish that like maybe iPhone came out earlier so I could have taken videos. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. I could have taken like like Instagram pictures and I wish I created a lot more memories la. But at that time when he passed away, there was no like. Like we only had that digital camera, yeah. like, like we and we didn't take a lot of photos, lah. So it, it's a shame. And um, if I were to turn back time, I really wish that like I I I relived the moment and cherished every uh, moment with him, lah. Mm. Yeah. Are there things that y'all do to, I guess, in some sense, try to remember your mm. parents a bit more? Uh. I think, I mean, cause his death was near my birthday. So I think every oh, oh no. every year um, when it's near my birthday, which is also a reason why I don't really like to celebrate my birthday. But mm, right. but uh, I think at every birthday, I'll take time to also remember that like death is, will always be a part of us. So I, I, I chose to remember the, the good moments I have with him. Can I ask like, 
did losing your dad like kind of change the way maybe you interact with you know your mom because mm. you know she's still around how yeah. how's it like with you and your mom oh i became so I, i'm a different person now like last time i used to be <laughs> i i think like, i was a spoiled brat man like, i i really think that i was a terrible kid but i think that uh ever since i i lost my dad right i i i really ha- have great respect for her i think when she was wailing at the deathbed to to the point where she had to pick herself up, get a job, and provide for the family. Before that, she wasn't working. Uh, she was like a housewife, uh. yeah. So like my dad was the, the breadwinner, bread like, cause she's not very well educated, right? So mm. she had to like pick a odd job, like kind. And it's really tough, lah. Like now, as in, I I started to, uh, to ask her more in the more recent years. Then I realized that like, uh, she wasn't treated very well at, at her job, cause she don't work last time. So like she mm. have no skills at all. So when she went to work, right, it's like yeah. the Wow. Like people are think people are like this, this kind of simple thing you also don't know uh, that kind. So like, but she persevered on and provided for the family, right? I don't know. <laughs> she provided for the family, right? So like, I really have like mad respect for her, uh, Cause mm. like, like from losing a husband to mm. picking yourself up and and raising the family, I think oh no, <laughs> like really not time. easy. <laughs> yeah, like I only realized this as I grow older actually, like. Like last time when I was like maybe still in my teens, right? I still take it for granted. Like yeah. then I realized that when I take pocket money from her, she sacrificed a lot for for us, mm. like for me and my sister lah. So I only asked her recently. Then she she said like actually like no, don't have money really last time. Like she really uh. gave everything that she have to to provide for us. I guess maybe because we're all in the same generation, right? So it's like when you when we think of a story like that, I think of like oh Miriam who lost her parents. <laughs> And Wei Jian who lost his dad, but you don't think of like Wei Jian's mom who lost her husband. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a wife now. Like if ever I were to lose my husband and I have a kid, I will go crazy. I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 Mad respect for your mom and your dad. Yeah. Now that we are all working, like yeah. I think she's a lot really yeah. a lot more relieved. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, and I think like she can like enjoy life a little like, bit. Now easy. she goes for facial lah. Oh yeah. my god, and yeah. she should. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's yeah. my dream to bring her for holiday someday lah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like nice. like a nice yeah. retreat yeah. kind. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I never got to ask my dad, right? Like how he could ask his yeah, mom. Because of your dynamics. Yeah, because of our time. dynamics. And also because I think at that point, like I also wouldn't have thought of asking him yeah. like how was it like. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I actually, I don't really think I do a lot of things to remember them. Yeah. Hmm. Is that I, intentional? I, I don't know. It's a great question. Yeah. Maybe I need to unpack that. <laughs> but after this shoot. After this shoot, yeah. <laughs> no, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's actually super intentional. Like. I just think that it's been so long. So like when we, when we just got married, um, we had to hold the wedding dinner a few oh, times, okay. like uh, overseas. And I was like, it was, it was wild because like, the person who was next to me was my uncle or my aunt. Yeah, not my parents. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think like being there with them helps me um, kind of like understand her a bit. So, yeah. yeah. So I don't mm-hmm. think it's like reliving memory, la, but just like being present with. Like know her a yeah, bit more. Uh, yeah, know her, know the people around her. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think like some Hong Kongers are really very loud, you know, like, <laughs> loud and rowdy and like super fun. And I think that's how they are. Mm. Yeah, they are as a family right now, and I'm sure like if my mom was still around, she would be like wise also. Yeah, mm. yeah. But with my dad, I mean like, granted lah, like, he was very very strict on me, but he still did things that like was fun. I think I remember there was this once, um, he brought us to like Thailand. I think it was Phuket. Then he just let my brother and I run wild free <laughs> at the beach. Like he just like okay, I'll be here. <laughs> Such you're a just, dad thing. You're yeah. just you're just go. And then yeah. like, okay, we went. And then like, I collected a lot of seashells, right? But like, I, I didn't realize that the seashells, like the animal is alive. Oh, she, yep, she brought I, it back. I brought it hotel. back to Singapore. <laughs> 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 and then like, whoa, gas bomb from the luggage, man. So I think like, they yeah, all died. In they the all luggage. died and they all like, obviously rot lah, right? Ew, so oh my God. Yeah, I think like, my father was just like, oh, <laughs> like, like, so silly, so stupid. But like, I think like, it's this kind of stuff that like, I remember now, nah, like, okay lah, mm. laugh lah, have to laugh. It's, yeah. it's so, like, I was so st- like, pea brain all the way. Yeah, <laughs> and I think like, it's those things that helps me remember the good side. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's not all bad, honestly. Like I, yeah. I, I mean I share that my my dad was tough on us, and I understand it like now as a as a young adult. But nah, there mm. were good memories la, like that, mm. like the Phuket thing. Yeah. yeah, I remember him yeah. like being super sunburned, you know, like 
yeah, he's a very fair Hong Konger. He's not a tan <laughs> Hong Konger, but my brother and I are tan. So we came back darker, he came back red. <laughs> dealing with like the dead the sea the animals in the animals. Kong. So yeah, I think like it's this kind of stuff like, that like I would I would remember and think through rather mm. than like the, the sadder moments. Yeah, yeah, I think like it's intentional. Yes. Actually it's quite cool because it's like even though you may not have a lot of uh very clear memories with your parents, but somehow like a part of them really is yeah. part of you. Yeah, yeah. No. I yeah. think, like, and I think like that's something that that grief will teach you over time. Mm. You won't, you won't yeah. get this immediately. Yeah, I don't think like yeah. Wei and I would be here now, like being able to recount all this, like if it weren't for us, like really fully feeling all those things when we were younger. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I think like knowing that an element of grief is sadness, but also like remembering the good times, lah, yeah. and and being intentional to do that to keep it alive. I think. Yeah, mm. yeah I think that's something that that. I think it comes with growing up as well. Yeah. I, I think that if you ask me like maybe like six, seven years ago, it's a different perspective. Mm. I, I feel like as you grow older, your perspective of life, mm. your perspective of grief is very different from how I was thinking of like mm. maybe seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like maybe seven years ago, I'll be thinking about sadness, what I lost, yeah. um, what I don't have. But I think now at, at like my mid-twenties, um, I feel like my perspective of life and grief very different. Like it's still sad, but mm. there's a there's a element of like remembrance mm. compared to like oh what I don't have, what I lost. I thought mm. I thought that was something that um really helped me. I, I feel like that comes with growing up yeah. and growing o- older. Mm. And I feel like if for anyone that feels like like grief is overwhelming, right? I think it, it will get better, lah, I feel. Mm. Yeah, but for me it it came with uh, time and yeah. growing yeah. up. Do you feel like that also, that understanding helped you to, I guess, let down your guard and now you, mm. do you feel like maybe now you're a bit more open to letting uh, new people in? Mm. Wow, that's a good question. Oh, that's uh, a good still question. Still like figuring out. I feel like I'm still at a stage of um, figuring out. Um, okay. But I think growing older with more perspective, like having that self-awareness helps. Because like, mm. I think in the past, like I can share all this now because uh, like on hindsight, okay, I know that this is why I act out this way. But if yeah. you ask me many years ago, why am I so guarded, right? It's just like like that, all like like mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. But now at, at mid twenties, I I know why because like I think that like I don't want to feel that sense of loss. So like having that self awareness mm-hmm. and to fight that 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 you know struggle. Self regulate Yeah, like self regulate yeah, yeah. law. So in terms of uh, allowing new friends into my life, uh, to to be more vulnerable with people. I think that takes a lot of intentionality on my end. Like mm. the awareness that, okay, this exists in my life and yeah. I need to fight it. Mm. Yeah. I think that, that yeah, that comes... That's with, something that you are working through now. Yeah, yeah, correct. Mm. So for our friends and viewers out there who might be going through this, um, what's like one thing that uh, you found helpful mm. practically as you process this grief? Mm. Um, I think like, one practical thing was that my friends made sure that I wasn't alone and isolated. So my 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 suggestion is to not isolate yourself, mm. Like to when when grieving, when going through all these like tough seasons, right? Like to not, um, it's okay, la, Like to to want to be alone sometimes, but mm. I think like don't isolate. Let the friends in your life like care for you and love you. Yeah. But at the same time, like don't hide in like laughing with them but like mm. don't suppress when being yeah. with them don't like have to be okay in front of them yeah yeah like let let the emotions show la and mm. and cry with them laugh with them be in that safe space mm. so i think that's mm. like my practical advice because that helped me like my friends really was there for me like up until now and i think mm. like if it weren't for my friends like being so gracious to me also at the time yeah i think like i wouldn't have been able to process la, mm, a lot yeah. of my thoughts mm. yeah. so yeah i think my tip is to not isolate and mm. don't actively suppress. Mm. Yeah, okay. I kind of agree also. Like to not to not suppress. I feel like you don't have to put a a, a, a expiry date on your grief. Mm. Like when you rush your process of grief, um, it's just shoving it under the blanket, and like you know that you'll come back out again. Like, but which is which is what happened for me la, When I felt like I needed to go back to normalcy immediately, right? Mm. I think that it came and bite me at the back la. So mm. I felt like. Uh, give give space for yourself to grieve and to really feel what you feel. Like it's okay to feel sad. Like it's okay to feel a sense of loss. Like it, like if you shortchange yourself of that, 
it's not gonna do you any good as well. Lah. So yeah, I agree with Mira. Don't don't surprise and uh let people journey with you and and celebrate the happy memories, law. Yeah. I think that really helped with the grief mm. process as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank That'd you. So. Thank you for sharing so much yeah. of this yeah. very personal area of your life. Um when we were preparing for this shoot, right? And then we caught them, they said they like they don't cry in front of people. And, <laughs> He's saying, uh, people who have known me for a very long, never <laughs> oh seen you cry. Today, all of y'all see them cry many, many times. Oh, uh, but yeah, I think today you're already a bit more composed than when we caught that day. We had a moment where all of us were just bawling on screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know why, you know. Why were we, why were we bawling? No, we thought about the memories one. It's Nata's then question. we cried. Oh, it's question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Voice, but I, yeah. I all cried out. <laughs> so yeah. 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 That day on the call, you we were ready for that question. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think, yeah, because that question when you first asked us, like, caught us off guard. I think no one would have asked yeah, yeah. you. No one. Nah, I don't yeah. think, yeah. Yeah, but it's a, it's a common thing I see amongst people who um, are a bit older and lost their parents when they were really young, right? Yeah. And then I remember when I first read it like for the first time realized that oh my gosh this is a thing it wrecked me mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I was like i can't imagine a day where like i i can't Forget really remember how my parents sound yeah. like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah and it wrecked me for a while and i think when you asked us that question we were wrecked on the yeah. call so we were like whoa <laughs> what a question, what yeah, a question. Yeah, yeah. it was like what 11 p.m already yeah. <laughs> everything was coming out man yeah lor. so yeah. this is really not gonna lie lah, right but yeah, yeah we hope that i mean hearing from today's episode if you are going through something like that you know that whatever strange experiences you are going through and whatever strange feelings you have you really aren't alone and in fact yeah. it's perfectly fine if grief looks a little bit different yeah. for everybody mm-hmm. but I think like what they said lah, it would be great to find people yeah. who can support us as we figure out some of these things that we're feeling so if you like this episode you can give us a like you can also send it along to somebody who might appreciate it you can subscribe to our channel and you can find our content on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts you can also find our account on social media on mm. TikTok and Instagram at ngl.people and we also have a Telegram channel where we post behind the scenes footage as well as information about our upcoming events and so thank you once again for joining us on today's episode <laughs> and we will see you in the next one bye bye, bye.